Hi everyone, this is Kostis Karadias, and today I will present to you Proof of Bird. Uh, this is joint work with uh, Agelos Kayas from the University of Edinburgh and Ionisis Indras from the University of Athens. So uh, this talk is basically concerned with uh, burning cryptocurrency. Uh, the kind of setup we have is we have uh, Alice who wishes to burn some of her coins and then uh, after she does that, she wishes to convince Bob or some other party that her coins are actually burned. And uh, for this, uh, she provides him with some proof and then he can verify that the, the coins are actually burned. So uh, before we go on to uh, define more formally what burning is, uh, which is the main topic of this work, uh, let's first talk about why would someone burn money and destroy it at all? So um, in cryptocurrencies, there are some uh, use cases that have appeared in, in previous work. Um, so one of them is Open Bazaar. Open Bazaar, for those of you who don't know, is a decentralized marketplace, and it has been around for a long time. Now, all, all stores in Open Bazaar are um, basically a, anyone can create their their store. So it is kind of hard for uh, users to trust stores because um, they could just disappear overnight. And um, so there's no guarantees at all and there's no centralized entity to guarantee to you that you will not get scammed, for example. So um, a proof of burn is used for this uh, in, in the following manner. So uh, imagine you open a physical store, for example, then um, the, the reason people can trust it like, implicitly is that it costs to set up the store, right? So you have this like whole building, maybe. So uh, it, it costs you to, to, to make this and it's probably not worth it to you to just scam someone and then like tear it down and go away. So in the same sense, um, uh, in Open Bazaar, you, can, you have uh, vendors actually burning money to show this kind of commitment themselves, to, to show that they're actually not going to disappear overnight and uh, it's not worth it for them to scam you for like uh, pennies, for example. So um, Open Bazaar uh, made use of this, and um, in order to kind of imitate a, a, a trust, uh, basically because they couldn't, uh, they can't have a centralized trust system like you can, for example, with eBay. Now, um, uh, then another uh, very popular use for proof of burn has been. Uh, bootstrapping some new cryptocurrency. And uh, I'm sure you're aware that uh, new cryptocurrencies do all kinds of various things to uh, provide new coins. Uh, but Counterparty basically was a pioneer in this and they said, um, you can get with, within some fixed time period, if you burn some of your Bitcoin, you will be able to get some Counterparty uh, coins. So, um, you basically burn Bitcoin and generate um, some other coin. So um, one important point I want to, to bring here is that actually proof of burn um, is is not new. It has been around for a long time, I think since uh, 2011, and it's been invented by Ian Stewart, who um, uh, is at Imperial College London. So. Um, okay, so now let's let's start and and see basically what our formalization looks like. So we have Alice, and um, she starts with some string which we call a tag, and this can be any kind of string she selects. And then she uses this tag to generate a burn address. And then when when she generates it, it just looks like a normal cryptocurrency address, and then she can just send coins to it. And then she will know. Uh, that this this money is basically destroyed, and um, if she sends the the tag and the this transaction to some other party, let's say Bob, then Bob can actually check the transaction and see, okay, uh, Alice actually burned her coins with this tag, and uh, basically these the, he, Bob can be sure that these coins are basically unrecoverable. So let's uh, uh dive into more uh, the uh, the tag more so the tag can be any string of the user's choice as you said and for open bazaar for example it could be the vendor id so uh, if i am a vendor the way i do the burn is i 
I take my vendor ID from OpenBazaar and then I generate an address with that and then burn some coins and then publish the proof on OpenBazaar, for example. So uh, now let's start looking more at uh, our contributions to this. Now, this is a more formal definition of the protocol I just stated, uh, which says basically that a burn protocol consists of two functions. Uh, one of these functions generates the burn address and it's called gen burn order, which takes a security parameter and then the tag T and it gives you the burn address. And then we have the burn verify, which Bob in our example should run, which also takes a security parameter, then it takes the tag and some address and then it verifies that you know this address is actually a burn address for that tag and it actually encodes it correctly and then we actually base this uh on on uh, a blockchain an underlying blockchain protocol and uh it turns out the only two things we need from blockchain are the uh, address generation so um uh, the basically when you start a wallet it generates some uh some key pair for you so you have a public and a secret key and then from this secret key from this sorry from this public key uh, an address is derived so this is what gen adder does and uh, of course it's deterministic. every time you run it it should give you like a different address and uh, we have uh, spend verify which takes a transaction m and then as a signature a sigma and a public epk and it basically verifies to you that okay this transaction M is spendable by PK. And uh, this is what the gen adder and spend verify look like for Bitcoin P2PKH. P2PKH stands for uh, pay to public key hash. So you basically, when you send coins to someone, you send it to their uh, public key hash uh, instead of their full public key. And uh, uh, yeah, so this is what the verification looks like. You take a public key hash and then you extract from, from the signature, the public key, you verify that this public key matches. Like if you hash it, it, is, it matches the public key hash that you were given. And then you verify that the transaction is signed with this public key. And the address generation is basically just relies on the underlying signature scheme where you do the, you run the gen and it gives you a public and secret key back. And then you, you hash the, the, public, the public key to get a public key hash, and then what is returned is basically the public key hash and the secret key. So now let's look at the properties of, of uh, the burn protocol. And uh, so we have correctness and spendability binding and unsettability, and, and we define this formally. So, Correctness basically says that if we have a Alice and she burns and she does so according to the protocol, then Bob will have to be convinced that she actually burned. So uh, this is a pretty uh, uh, basic uh, condition. And then the the main thing for burn like uh, turns turns out to be unspendability. So um, you basically what is required is that if someone burns their coins that they will they're not able to spend them in the future so like this is the, the, the crux of, of of proof of burn basically and uh if someone actually tries to fake a burn then uh it, this will be detectable so um this is like more formally how this uh this is defined and we define basically a, a a game for this so this is how spend attack works uh, we request from the adversary that they generate some tag and then an, an address and uh, a transaction to go with it, such that the address is a burn address for the tag provided. And then also the transactions, the transaction spent coins uh, destined to that address. So um, uh, if this happens, then the adversary wins the game. And uh, what we say is that the pro we say that the protocol is unspendable if for all adversaries, um, uh, this uh, uh, all adversaries succeed with only with at most negligible probability. Um, then binding says basically that um, the tag that is associated uh, that the, there is only a single tag that can be associated with a burn. So um, basically, this is like a, a, a collision of of uh, burn address generation. You, it could be thought of in this way. Uh, in which um, only a burn address can be 
um, matched only to a single tag. And uh, the game more formally is that so bind attack basically requests from the adversary that they return two tags and a burn address such that these tags are not the same, but they verify um, with the same address. And then, of course, the protocol is binding if this can only happen with negligible probability for all polynomial time adversaries. And then we have ancestorability, which basically we need to say that um, uh, people who observe these transactions are not able to distinguish them as, as burn transactions. And uh, there might be many reasons to do this. Um, for example, one could imagine that um, miners of a cryptocurrency may not like that uh, uh, people burn, and they may think this would impact their usage of, of the chain they're mining on, and they could try to censor such burn transactions. So um, we think this is also an important property. So ancestorability uh, is formally defined in the following way. We, we have two distribution ensembles. One of them is uh, the uh, basically the address that would be normally generated by the blockchain protocol. And then the other is uh, address generated by the burn protocol. And we define the ancestorability with respect to some distribution of tags T. And then we say, okay, um, uh, the, the, the distribution of the, the burn addresses is as follows. We draw a tag from this distribution of tags, and then we generate a burn address for that tag, and then we return the, the, that address. And this is how this, uh, this second distribution ensemble is produced. And then we require those uh, two distribution ensembles to basically be indistinguishable. So uh, now let's look at the, the next contribution. Um, which is that we propose our own scheme for this. And uh, it is actually a very simple scheme. So um, we have Alice and uh, she basically starts with uh, some burn metadata, which we previously call the tag. And then she basically needs to hash this and flip the last bit. And we call this uh, flipping a perturbation. So um, then uh, this basically is what will, will be her address and uh, this uh, this is already like a, a, a Bitcoin address, for example. And then the proof of burn for 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 proving that she has burned, she can actually provide a transaction and then the tag and then someone else because this is um, deterministic. If they follow the same procedure and uh, go and hash the metadata and then flip the last bit, they should arrive at the the address found in the transaction. And then if there's a match, they can accept the proof. And this is uh, the, the more uh, formal uh, definition of a scheme. So as we said, Jernburn Adder works by taking this tag T, it hashes it, produces this TH, and then TH prime is basically uh, TH with uh, XORing by uh, the bit one, which is basically flips the last bit. And then this is what we return. And then verification, because this is deterministic, we can just invoke Jernburn Adder again on the tag and verify that the purported address provided uh, that and verification works as follows. So we basically take this tag and then we run Jember Adder ourselves. And because this is deterministic, it should give us the same um, TH prime as provided. So um, actually in the paper, we uh, prove that all the properties that we mentioned earlier, that they are uh, covered. So this scheme is secure. So let's uh, go through them very quickly one by one. So we have correctness, and uh, I, I guess correctness uh, may be obvious because um, burn address generation is deterministic, and uh, that basically the prover and verifier they run the exact same code. So verification should always pass for uh, a joint burn address. So unspeedability is basically helped by the fact that we flip the last bit, and uh, it is basically uh, uh, computationally feasible to know the preimage of both some uh, value a and then this same value but with the last bit flipped and we actually prove this we will have a full proof for this in the paper by modeling the hash function as a random oracle then binding directly follows from the collision resistance of the hash function uh, because if someone produces two different t's that both verify for the same address then it means they basically they hash to the same thing essentially so we also prove our scheme uncensorable. And uh, in order to do this, we need to assume that the tags are, that the tag distribution is unpredictable. 
And uh, so then basically the proof is based on the fact that um, the hash of an unpredictable tag and the hash of a public key, which from the uh, signature uh, uh, secure signature scheme gen algorithm comes out also as an unpredictable value uh, that these two hashes are basically both look uniformly random and uh, we also utilize a random oracle in order to prove this now uh, so an interesting use case for this is to actually bootstrap a new cryptocurrency so um, if we have an existing cryptocurrency then we can basically burn coins there to in order to uh, mint them on on the new cryptocurrency, and that here we have a kind of uh, pictorial representation of this, where on the top we have the existing cryptocurrency, and a burn happens on that uh, block that is marked uh, as black, and then on some other block on the uh, new cryptocurrency, which uh, whose, which blockchain is uh, uh, shown below, we basically reference this burn in order to mint new coins, and then we can have a, a rule that says uh, coins can only be minted uh, if a corresponding burn has been made on the existing blockchain. So our, our final contribution is that we have implemented this on Ethereum. So it's basically a smart contract that mints new tokens uh, if a corresponding burn on Bitcoin has been made. And uh, the, the costs are as little as uh, 28 cents per burn. So to conclude, in this work, we, we define proof of burn formally for the very first time, and uh, uh, we propose our own scheme, which is pretty simple, but we uh, also prove it secure uh, in the random oracle model. And um, we show how proof of burn can be used for one-way pegs, uh, even for um, cryptocurrencies with uh, disjoint blockchains. And we provide implementation of a Bitcoin to Ethereum one-way peg using this proof of burn, using our own proof of burn scheme, and uh, we actually demonstrate that it is practical. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, we can now take questions.